Okay, I'm going to show how to create a simple font from shapes I've made in Illustrator. If you're new to type design, then it's probably a good idea to start building your shapes in Illustrator because you likely know your way around Illustrator uh, more than something like Font Lab or Glyphs. Um, I'm going to be working in Font Lab and importing importing my letters from Illustrator. Now, there is a certain, the certain way that you have to set up your file in Illustrator so that when you copy them and paste them into the glyph cells, glyph cells be, we'll see, I'll show you in a minute, uh, so, that they, that, so that they get pasted in a way that's predictable. And so this template I'm working from is based off of instructions from Font Lab if you're going to build your letters in Illustrator. Okay, so I could design all my letters small and then enlarge them to the size that Font Lab expects, which is 700 points. Uh, but then I would have to copy them and paste them individually. Um, I'll show you in just a minute. Um, but instead, I create them all at one tenth um, the size that Font Lab expects, and then I will transform them. Um, I'll, I'll bump them up 10 times their size later on. So first let's get our font started. Uh, if you just open Font Lab, you get this screen. If you don't get this screen, just go to File, New Font. So we're just gonna give our font a name. I'm just gonna go call it my font for now. Say create new font. All right, so this, these are the glyph cells I was talking about. So if I worked from that, if I used the workflow um, based off of the template that Font Lab uh, tells you to design, uh, I would have to copy and paste each letter individually. And that's not something I want to do, um, especially when I'm working on my fonts for sale because I these, this is, usually about the smallest character set. Um, so it gets really tedious. So there is a method I'm gonna to use to import my letters um, in bulk. And then, uh, and then I can deal with the spacing and all the, you know, all the little nuanced stuff that you have to do to make a quality font. So that's the thing we're fo focused on primarily is just getting our letters in here um, pretty quickly. And it'll be, it's actually much quicker than this video might make it seem like because I'm narrating it. But here's how we can um, get these letters in these cells at the right size um, pretty quickly. All right, so when I say in these cells, you know, our letters are ultimately going to occupy um, these cells, our letters, not these um, ghost letters here. So you can see, um, that font lab is expecting something that is based on a zero um, to 700 um, baseline to cap height ratio. So <clears throat> coming back to our Illustrator file here, that's the size that these are, but if I were to design all my letters next to one another, um, which is something you wanna do because you reuse DNA and you wanna make sure everything stays perfectly aligned with one another, you're gonna run out of space on your artboard. That's why I design everything at one tenth the size. Okay, so I have all my letters designed here um, all in a row. And again, that's on, that's because I use or reuse pieces of one letter for another letter, so I can alt click and drag, holding shift, and make sure that they, you know, stay exactly in alignment with one another. Uh, so here's one key thing you want to make sure you do, whether you're building in Font Lab and using uh, elements, or whether you're an Illustrator and just using shapes. Make sure that you keep versions of your letters that have that that are made from pieces. Um, that you don't just that you don't just uh, you know unite all your paths. Make sure you make a copy of it because you're you're likely to you know want to either change a letter or build upon your character set later on, and so you want to keep your DNA intact so that you can uh, so you want to have to you know take one of these letters apart. So once you have your font designed, um, you know all, all your letters created. Yeah, you will want to make a copy of it like I have here and then go through with your Pathfinder tool and unite all your paths. So you know, 
Um, let me grab this in here. Oh, the T I missed. You know, you'll do that. So that's what I did to this whole row here. All right, so I'm going to take these letters and get them into FontLab without having to copy and paste them individually and scale them up, you know, one at a time, uh, 10 times what their current size is. So here is how we're going to do that. There's a, um, there's a panel we can open up in FontLab called Sketchboard. I need to empty this out. It will be empty when you open it up by default. Okay. So this panel is meant for lots of things, but um, we're just going to use it as sort of a staging ground to get our letters ready to, to, to occupy the cells here. So you want your rulers to be visible in this sketchboard. Sometimes you have to toggle it off and then back on to actually get rulers. All right, and we're gonna drag a guide out. And you're gonna you want to drop it at a, you know a good location, uh, just a good a round number. It doesn't you know it doesn't need to be um, you know anything you know any specific number, just something that's you know a good a round number that's easy to remember. So we have our guide panel uh, that we need to have open. Any panel that it's ever referenced, if you don't see it, just go to window panels and then just uh, check it. Okay, so this here um, is the location of my guide vertically. And then this here is the height of my guide. That's a weird concept, um, but just roll with it. All right, we're gonna make the height of this guide 700 because that is the size that Font Lab um, wants or is expecting our letters to come, to come into. When we, uh, before we get them into their cells. So we are going to now go back to Illustrator and copy the, the letters that we want to bring in. Make sure that you don't have anything overlapping like this because um, FontLab will try and you know interpret that as one letter. So we'll copy our letters and Wait, let me get all of them. Sorry about that. And then we're going to go into Font Lab, into our sketchboard. Make, make sure you click on your sketchboard. Sometimes it becomes um, inactive. So just click on it. And then I'm going to just Command V, paste my letters into here. Right now it's just one big group of shapes. Oh, one thing to check for um, before you start manipulating anything is just go to uh, File or I'm sorry, I click on my cells here. Go to file font info and make sure that round coordinates is not checked. We don't want anything being rounded um, right now because it's gonna be, whatever rounding happens is going to be amplified by 10. So make sure that that's not checked. So let's cancel and go back to our sketchboard that's hidden behind our cells. Okay, so let's click on this, uh, this group of letters here, we're going to transform this uh, times 10. Anytime you do a transform, make sure that you hit reset before you do it, because there may be something you've done before um, that it's still, still going to sit in here. So I want to scale, scale it horizontally and vertically a um, 1000%. So 10 times its current size. So I'm going to hit apply and they scale up to so that the you know my flat letters are 700 point tall i want to get this so that setting on the base you know what you know this guide that, that's going to serve as or represent my baseline i'm going to get it so that this is sitting on my baseline um you can get you you want to get exact with this but i don't want to get uh, I don't want to get you know too wonky, you know, and doing you know little math equations and stuff. So uh, I want to get my letters sitting here, and I I move them all together on purpose. Do not move your letters individually because then things like a Q or a C or a J, you know, things that hang um, above and below the baseline and cap height, you know, those letters get uh, moved around in ways that you don't want to. You want to keep your letters aligned perfectly with one another. All right, so now we have them in here and scaled up. We want to separate them because they're all just one group of letters right now. So there's a command we can run that will accomplish 
two things for us. So we say element, optically separate. So one thing that does is it ungroups these letters, but then the other thing that it does, which is helpful, is that it tries to identify what these letters are. So if I go to this element panel here, and if you can't see this little tag here, click this little panel here. You can see that it, uh, it tries to identify my letters. The, if your font is pretty straightforward in its design, then it does a pretty good job of identifying them. Um, and I think this actually um, identifies all of them correctly. But if if you know it doesn't identify it correctly or it doesn't even try to identify it, then you'll want to type in here what letter that actually is. So I'm just clicking through here to make sure that all of my letters are identified properly. Um, it looks like they are just real quick. Yeah, all of my letters have been identified correctly. But like I said, if you're designing a font that's funky, it's it's most it's it almost never identifies all of your letters correctly. So, all right, that's good. Um, now, these are just elements right now. They're not actually letters, um, but the command that we're going to run now will place these uh, letters or these forms into the cells that correspond to you know, whatever these are labeled as here. So I can say element, place as glyphs, and then I'm going to say selected elements. And then if I go back up here to my font, you know, the window, the, you know, the cell window, You can see uh, it's mostly <laughs> done what it's supposed to. I have no idea why uh, it moved my O into the space area. I think I might have accidentally um, deleted the O from the element. But you can see it drops my letters where they're supposed to go. Um, and if something doesn't go where it's supposed to, uh, scroll down to the bottom. There's various reasons why this happens. I won't go into all of them, but uh, you can just pull it on up. And yes, I want to replace existing content. All right, so that's you know that's what we want is all these letters in here and ready to go. Now, when you first bring all your letters in, um, it may be the case that they don't. You can't actually see them in here, and that's usually just because of the positioning of them. They have really wide. Uh, side bearings. Okay, so your side bearings, that's the amount of space that automatically appears when you type that letter in. Um, and that's represented by, you know, these lines on either side, if you open up a, you know, an individual letter. Sometimes these side bearings, you know, when you import them, they're something like this. So you see what happens, uh, things get all messed up. Um, so I can select all my letters. Uh, and in my glyph panel here, I can set those side bearings um, right here. So these are all these are not going to be the same ultimately because you know, different shapes require different amounts of space around them. But to at least get started, so you can see your letters and then work from there. Uh, we'll set something around fifty to get going, and we're going to save this. We haven't saved the font yet, so it's going to give us a you know. A key a queue to save our font somewhere. I'm going to save this into my uh, documents folder because there's not much in there and I don't want to go onto my messy desktop. So we're going to save this. This is going to be a, you know, whatever we call our font dot VFC. That's our working file and we're going to save that. Okay. So if you want to test your font um, and see how it's looking, um, you can click on this, uh, this little text button. And if you hit Command One in the in this window, um, it'll you know go back to normal zoom. So I only have uppercase letters, so I'm going to turn on my caps lock, and then I'm just going to type in a few words. Did my font six you know, successfully import? See if I type a question mark, I get. A little ghost question mark because I don't actually have one. Um, so here we go. We have my fonts 
my my letters in here ready to go if i need to bring more letters in later on i can go back to my sketchboard um import them in the same way and then i can just select only those ones you know let's pretend these are the, the new letters that i added and i'll go element places glyphs and um if i label them correctly then they will go to the right location uh one, a couple things that to make sure that um and do if you even if you're just doing an uppercase uh, font make sure you put a period in there because if you're typing um and then you hit a period it'll automatically switch to a default font and that's annoying and then another thing to do is mind your space bar usually with most of the fonts i make the space is the space character is far too wide so you know, just you know this is how you can change how much space happens when you hit the space it actually is a character all right so we need to make this thing functional so we need to export um, this as a font a workable font file so the way we do that is we say export file export font as oh i forgot one thing sorry file font info names so we we named it when we first started um but if you if, you know if you if you you know change the name or anything like that, make sure before you export it, you hit, hit build names. Um, different programs expect the name to be presented in different ways. So make sure you do that. And then we'll say file export font as, and we will want to use OTF whenever possible because it has the best uh, curves. I'm going to choose my download, or I'm sorry, my documents folder here to send it to because that's where my working file is. And I don't want it to be put in any subfolders. So now I can export it. And since I chose OTF, that should be the type of um, file that we get. So now let's go into my documents. And I should have my file in here my font see here's my working file and then here is the actual font file so just like any font that you've ever downloaded um, you can double click on it hit install font and i should be able to go into illustrator and choose that font and type with it now so go back to illustrator okay and I'm going to make this uppercase because I only have uppercase letters. Sorry for my slow computer here. Uppercase. And then for my character panel, I called it my font. So there it is, my font regular. All right. All right, we have a working font. 